is Nina and I created this channel because I wanted to talk about my journey with learning how to be self-compassionate and love myself through dealing with difficult things um, chronic illness motherhood my hair journey and um, I wanted to pay it forward because YouTube as well as you know many different blogs um, there were plenty of people who were courageous enough to share their story and by them doing that it helped me to feel less alone and um, I wanted to do that for anyone out there who is not um, have people who understand what they're going through and feels alone so In this video I want to talk to you about a condition that I experience um, it is called non-epileptic seizures. There's many different names to it, but um, I feel like that's the easiest. It is a seizure that I experience, but epilepsy is not the cause. It is more of um, a psychological cause, which doesn't make it any less, but it's just a different origin of what brings it on. And so in 2001, I did experience my first non-epileptic seizure. At the time, I didn't know that's what it was. I thought it was a panic attack. And uh, at the time, I was in nursing school, um, and the way it presented itself then was in the middle of the night, um, I woke up crying, stopping, crying, stopping, um, my body trembling, not being able to stop, uh, my teeth chattering, um, and my feet were cold and the hardest part of this uh, episode was that my um, it causes disassociation so I am able to hear everything going on I'm conscious but I'm not able to respond to others while it's happening and um, different than an epileptic seizure it lasts a whole lot longer um, so for that first time, you know, my parents were very scared. They didn't know what was happening to me. They called the ambulance. Um, you know, the ambulance checked me out. Nothing physically per se was going wrong. My heart was fine, you know, pulse, all those things, blood pressure. Uh, so they said, you know, we think you had a panic attack. So I went to the hospital again just to get checked over and they gave me a Xanax. Um, which I tried two times and I didn't really like the drugged feeling it gave me. Um, but that was my first experience with uh, non-epileptic seizures. And I remember going to a group, support group, for people who have anxiety attacks. And I remember describing mine and feeling so out of place um, that sometimes people who have panic attacks can have them right in front of you and you don't even know. But with, when I have my episode, you know <laughs> what's going on. Um, so 2001 was my first episode. 2006, I got married to a beautiful man and, um, you know, really great marriage. But even when good things happen, it is a big change. And sometimes that can cause a stress. And I feel that's what flared up this condition. Um, so 2001 to 2006 my uh, con my episodes changed. In 2006, you could clearly tell that it looked like I was having a seizure because my eyes would roll back, um, my body would be moving um, quite a bit, my legs or my arms. And um, so in 2009, I got my first visit with a neurologist to get an EEG uh, to find out if I had epilepsy. And that was fine. And then we did a video EEG, which is overnight, where they um, induce one of these episodes so that they can not only with the EEG measure the activity in your brain, but also visually with the video see what happens. So caffeine, I'm very sensitive to that and I know that could trigger it. So I had my husband get a McDonald's coffee and I was able to have a couple of episodes for them to see. And at the end of it, they told me that, well, you're not epileptic. Um, we didn't see any abnormal brain activity. They gave me a small little packet. And then um, that's when I first found out about psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. So they're seizures, but they're not, of, they're not from abnormal activity in the brain. So that was 2009. 
fast forward to now, I've still continued to experience them. They have intensified in their, um, in their symptoms. So I also had a son, he's almost three now. And I just wanted to make sure, I, I've recently went to the doctor uh, to redo the test over because it's almost been 10 years, just to make sure everything is still not, nothing abnormal going on up there. So um, that's when I found out about the conference that I recently went to um, for non-epileptic uh, seizures. And I got this amazing book, Psychogenic Non-Epileptic Seizures by Lorna Myers. This is her. And I'll also include the website to find out more about this condition. Um, I feel it's great. I wanna increase awareness. I'd love to know if there are others who are experiencing experiencing this as well as let people know about it um, maybe they know someone who has it um, and you know they could just feel less alone and even to even help increase your empathy for others who experience things that you don't the so seizures that I have now um, they have also changed because not only do I have the eye rolling but I've also been getting a whole lot more muscle spasms especially in my face um, one side of my face, my like if I smile, my cheek will go up and um, I'll get my lips will spasm, um, you know, sometimes my hands. And by the end of the seizure, I'm like so exhausted. And one of the reasons why I had decided I or I didn't plan to have a child is because of this and, um, you know, mental health. Uh, also, I have fibromyalgia and other you know, um, invisible illnesses, things that you can't see from looking at me. And what I feared having an episode while having my son has happened and I've survived them. He's never been in danger, thankfully. Um, they usually happen when I'm at home um, and in the morning. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, they also happen close to around the time that I have my cycle. Um, right before that kind of even lets me know when it's about to come I similar to people who have migraines I get like an aura that lets me know that it's about to happen I'll feel very faint I'll feel like my legs are about to give out and um, again it is also I feel my body's way of letting me know when I've done too much when I'm too stressed and so um, it can be really hard to deal with especially when my son witnesses one um, I had one last week and he he was like, mommy sleeping. And um, when he gets older, I will be able to explain this more to him. Um, you know, and it's hard to feel like I'm putting him through that. But at the same time, I do feel from myself experiencing chronic illness that it has increased my empathy for others pain. It has helped me to be more self aware. It's helped me to be more um, just a well-rounded person <laughs> to others. I think the biggest thing is being sensitive to others' pain. So that's not a bad thing for my son to acquire. Um, so anyone out there who is experiencing this, um, or for those who don't, please be patient and compassionate with those who are going through this. It is not easy. Um, and know that there are different things um, that this book will bring out, as well as the website that are therapies for this. Um, I'll keep you guys posted as to what my new results are um, but in the meantime you know just like anything else you just take things a day at a time my faith um, and my spiritual community and organization um, is really of benefit to me I have an amazing supportive husband and family um, so I'm really I have a lot to be grateful for despite the things that I uh, deal with I thank you guys so much for being willing to hear my story and um, learn more about this and um, if you have any questions let me know down in the comments down below bye beautiful butterflies